Hi everyone, welcome to this class where we are going to be looking at how to balance chemical equations and we are going to be practicing the different techniques. I am going to make the concepts really easy and crystal clear for you and uh, I am sure you will learn how to master balancing after this class but keep practicing. You know, balancing comes with practice so let's go ahead and get started. And before we start, I just want to say do check out the other courses on our website. We have all the courses for class 8, 9 and 10 for CBSE as you can see here. We have them for ICSE as well for class 8, 9 and 10. And then we have, you know, the IGCSE course. So in case you have any friends in the international board, you can recommend these courses. And we also have these awesome Java coding courses. So guys, uh, uh, we have the beginner level where I'll be taking, you know, there are a lot of videos and I'll be taking some practice programming and doubt sessions. And here we have just started the uh, weekly live classes. Uh, I took a free class. We'll upload that recording as well uh, by tomorrow. And uh, if you guys, uh, I haven't registered for this courses uh, and you're interested in learning coding java is a great language so you can take it and uh, please do share our courses with your friends all right so let's go ahead and get started yes next tuesday there will be a class on java that schedule it i think it's already there so you can always go to the website go to the home page and check the upcoming live classes so if you're logged in and you have taken the course it will show the ones relevant for you right so every tuesday we'll be having the uh, Java programming class at 6 p.m. for this course and this one also we will be having some classes all right so let's go ahead and start so balancing chemical equations right so all of you know what is a chemical equation right and how to write a chemical equation we have discussed that in the previous class in case you missed it you can always watch the video and of course we'll be doing lots of uh, equations when it comes relevant in the chapters in chemistry all right so one question is uh, why do we need to balance chemical equations right it's okay to write a, a chemical equation so but we'll see why do we need to balance it and i'm going to be discussing these two important methods with you table method is a you know a systematic method of making the table and then we'll also do the fast hit and trial method so you should practice both of these and uh, we'll see how to balance equations so uh, when you think of balancing you know have you seen this beam balance so here you can see if you go to the fruit seller you know what they're doing uh, they are balancing these apples and they put some weights here, right? You have seen that, right? So they put some weights. So what are they really balancing over here? So when you see this beam balance, do you guys know what do they balance? Yes, this will be a very fun class. So I want all of you to participate. So guys, can you tell me what do they balance? Uh, just like when you go for uh, fruit shopping, vegetable shopping, you see they use this kind of uh, weighing scale, apples and the weights, very good. So typically here, you know, they're balancing the mass of the apples, right? So let's say this is these three apples have a mass of one kg. Okay. So they'll put some weights here having a mass and the guy will tell you, you have bought one kg apples. Let's say one kg is uh, 100 rupees. So you have to pay him 100 rupees per kg, right? So here he's trying to balance the mass of the apples. That's what a beam balance or a physical balance is used for not exactly weight because you know the gravitational force the acceleration due to gravity gets cancelled so here just think about it uh, we use uh, we are balancing mass here in a way weight but not exactly weight because uh, the acceleration due to gravity gets cancelled as we'll learn in physics but now in a chemical equation what are we balancing so all of you have seen this famous equation right hydrogen plus oxygen combines to give water everybody's clear about this and when you represent it in a chemical equation, you have to write it like this, right? So why I'm writing hydrogen as H2? Why not simply H? Can you guys tell me? So as you can see, uh, hydrogen is not just represented by its symbol H. We need to write H2. Can you guys tell me why? Same way oxygen is written O2. Why is that? Why not just H plus O? Who can tell me here? Very good. Tejas is saying molecular form. So please remember chemical equations are always written in terms of molecules right so we represent the equation in terms of its molecules fantastic right so this is one molecule of hydrogen this is one molecule of oxygen right and this is one molecule of water for elements you have to use atomicity values h2 o2 these are all diatomic very good sivan is saying atomicity for compounds, what do we need to use, guys? When you're writing the molecular formula, you have to use valency. Compounds, very good. Valency for compounds, right? So everybody's clear. This should not be just H plus O gives H2O. 
H2 diatomic, O2 is diatomic, one molecule gives one molecule of water. Okay? So, this is absolutely fine uh, chemical equation in molecular form, but we will see what is the balancing problem here. So, just like we will be like the fruit seller, just like he is trying to balance the mass of the apples with the mass this side, right? So, he will check when this needle comes in the center, both the masses are equal. So, in a beam balance, you are balancing mass, right? Same thing in a chemical reaction, you need to balance the mass. So, let us take a look. Do you guys know what is the mass of one hydrogen atom? So, what is the mass of one hydrogen atom? Can you guys tell me? Does anybody know here? Hydrogen atom, what is the mass of a hydrogen atom? Okay, no problem if you guys do not know. It has a mass of 1 amu or simply 1 u, 1 unit, right? 1 amu, atomic mass unit. If you do not know the value, uh, you can note it down. Oxygen, right? It is given in your books or you will see it. Oxygen is 16 u, okay? So, let us do some maths here. We have to check the mass on the left hand side and right hand side of this equation. Okay? So, here on the left hand side we have H2 and O2 right? and on the right hand side you know, so these are called the reactants on the left hand side, right hand side is the product. So, I am going to put these on our beam balance. So, what is the mass on the left? H2 means how much mass will H2 have? Can you guys tell me what will be the mass of H2? Because one hydrogen atom. 1 hydrogen is 1 u, 1 oxygen is 16 u. So, this total mass becomes how much? Can you guys tell me? H2 will be 2 times 1 u, very good, 2 u, excellent guys. And what is the mass of oxygen? 2 times 16 u, oxygen, 1 atom. So, these are called atomic masses, 1 atom is 16 u. So, O2 will be 16 times 2, 32, right? So, just to give you guys the knowledge and background here, so, if you add it up, what is the total mass of the reactants? 2u plus 32u. Can you guys see it? So, total mass is going to be, so this total is going to be equal to 34u. Everybody agrees with me? Very good, very good, 34u. Simple, right? H2 plus O2. Now, on the right hand side, we have water. Can you guys calculate the mass of one molecule of water based on these atomic masses? Think and do it. It is very easy. What will be the mass of water? Let us write it in a different color. So, reactants I will write in a green color. Water is going to be 2 times 1, right? So, 2u or we can say 2 times 1 plus 16u. So, what is the mass going to be? Wow, you guys are great. I can see you guys have written 18u. So, is it balanced? Is our beam balance balanced here? Is it balanced? Yes or no? Tell me. No. Because which way will it turn? This side is much heavier, 34u. So, the beam balance is going to turn this way. It is more heavy, 34u and 18u. So, the mass is not balanced. Should the mass be balanced? That is a very important question. Should the mass be balanced? Yes or no? Very good. Tejas is saying law of conservation of mass. Fantastic. You guys have heard of this? That matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Right? And in a chemical reaction, the what that means is mass of the reactants, the mass of the guys on the left hand side should equal to the mass of the products. So, it has to obey the law of conservation of mass. Right? So, we have, this is not good, this is not balanced. Right? It is more on the left hand side. So, how do we balance it? Now, ob obviously, we cannot change these formulas, right? Because they have said water is being formed, you cannot do H2O2. So, that is what we are going to learn today. So, let us say, uh, you need more water molecules on the right, right? So, let us say if you put 2 on the right, okay? So, how much is that mass going to be? 18 times 2, right? We will see that, right? So, this will become, if you put 2 water molecules, it is going to be this whole thing multiplied by 2, right? So, if you put 2 water molecules here, this is now going to be 36 u. 2 times 18, right? Exactly, we are multiplying the molecules. And if you multiply hydrogen two times, now let us check. So, if you guys check this equation, is it balanced now? So, left hand side, let us calculate the mass. Two times two times one. So, that will now become, right? Since we have two H2O here, instead of two U, it is going to become four U plus 32 U. So, the new total is going to be 36 U. 
Now guys check, is it balanced or not? Is it balanced? Right? So please take a look here, what can you see? On the left side, we have 2H2 plus O2 and now the total is 36U. Right side also, the total is now 36U. So I'll erase all of this, right? Or we can just put a multiplication 2 here. So 18 times 2 because we have 2H2O, right? So that's going to be 36U. Now is it balanced? Yes, it's balanced. We are not violating the law of conservation of mass. We cannot violate that. So this is why you balance chemical equations to obey the law of conservation of mass, right? So we are obeying the law of conservation of mass. So what are we balancing? We are balancing the mass. But what is the good part is we don't have to usually bother about these mass numbers because the atoms don't change, right? Hydrogen remains hydrogen. Hydrogen doesn't become gold or something else, right? So if you can balance the number of atoms of each element, it's enough, right? So we'll see that, that uh, 2 times 2, 4 hydrogen atoms, 2 times 2, 4 hydrogen, 2 oxygen atoms and 2 times 1, 2 oxygen atoms. So finally, you're actually balancing the number of atoms of each element on the left side and on the right side which is the same as balancing mass, okay? So we don't have to go every time to mass level. We can just work on the number of atoms of each element, okay? Exactly, it is just a chemical reaction is just a rearrangement of atoms. So the number of atoms should match, right? So how to balance chemical equations? We'll uh, talk about that and just let me write in this slide since it is very important. So please note, uh, let me write that law that we discussed. Since we are balancing mass, so we are uh, basically obeying the law of conservation of mass. So if they ask you, why do you balance chemical equations for the law of conservation of mass? This is a very famous question. Why do we balance it? Not just to satisfy numbers, to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Clear? So how do you balance a chemical equation, right? There are two methods we are going to uh, discuss in today's class. The systematic table method, right? So table method is very neat and clean, systematic, and it is very advisable to use it for difficult equations, right? And then there is the fast hit and trial method where you don't have to make a table, you can save time and quickly solve it, right? So this is, this is fast, this is more systematic. We'll learn both the methods and then we'll see uh, which ones to use, okay? And just like, you know, Solving a Rubik's Cube. Have you guys solved a Rubik's Cube? Do you guys know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? I'm still learning the techniques, you know. I'm not an expert, right? So I'm still learning it, but it requires patience and practice, right? So if you guys have learned a Rubik's Cube, it needs patience and practice to do it. Same thing for balancing. After today's class, I want you to be an expert on it, but you, to be a real expert, you have to practice. You'll understand the methods today, but guys, please practice. Don't memorize balancing equations. Please don't learn it as 2H2 plus O2 is 2H2O. Learn how to balance it so that any equation in the exam, you guys should be able to balance. So is that a promise? Will you guys practice balancing of equations? No, don't memorize them, okay? Can you write promise in the chat here? Definitely, very good. All right. So let's first start with our table method. So what is the table method? you basically need to make a table of the number of atoms of each element. Like I discussed, you don't have to bother about mass. That was just to show you the example. What we need to really balance, we have to balance the number of atoms, not of one element, of each element. Every element's number of atoms has to be balanced. So we'll make a table for that. And we will start by balancing the easiest element. Because you know, uh, if you start with the easy ones, sometimes the difficult ones balance automatically. Right? So you don't have to work just with the difficult ones first. Always try to do the easy ones. Okay, And keep doing it till the table is balanced. Sometimes when you balance it, table will get disbalanced. Don't worry. Keep on doing it till you finally get it balanced. So let's take a look here how to look at the table. Right. So let's say you have uh, hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. Okay. So this is the equation. Right. Uh, so we have, uh, we'll see how to balance it. So please make a table like this. I want all of you to pick up your pen and paper and make a table. What is the table of elements, right? So uh, make three columns, elements, left hand side, number of atoms and right hand side. LHS stands for left hand side, RHS is right hand side. So can you guys tell me 
what are the elements in this equation? Can you tell me? Yeah. Very good. Rajesh is asking why we write arrow instead of equal to. Usually the convention in most books is to write an arrow. Right. You, some books also write an equal to because equal to is usually used for mathematical equations. Chemistry equations look nicer with the arrow. But if your book is using equal to, you can do that. This is usually the recommended way. Okay. So what are our elements? Very good, guys. Let's write it down. The elements are clearly hydrogen and oxygen. And please don't write H2O2, right? Just the symbols because we are talking about elements. So just please write the symbols here so that there's no confusion of number. Okay. And you don't have to write the full word, just H and O, okay, to save your time. Now, what do we have to do? Count the number of atoms. So you have to first fill up this table that what is the number of atoms on the left side and right side and then this table will help you balance. All right. So what is the number of atoms on the left side for hydrogen? Guys, can you tell me? So number of atoms of hydrogen is clearly 2. It is H2, right? So we'll write 2 here. What about oxygen, guys? How many atoms? Again, 2. Very good. Now let's come to our right hand side, the product side. So what is the number of hydrogen atoms in the right hand side? Very good. 2 because H2. What is the number of atoms of oxygen on the right hand side? Very good guys. You guys know your chemistry. Very good. 1 because it is H2O1, right? Only we don't write 1 because water is 2 hydrogen, 1 oxygen. Okay. So everybody is comfortable with this table. Now always you should check. Sometimes the equation itself is balanced. So you don't have to do anything, right? Then you are lucky. But here if you see you have to check each row because each row is each element, right? So check each, are all the rows balanced? This one is balanced, right? 2 and 2. But if you look at the last row, is it balanced? No. 2 on the left side, only 1 on the right hand side. So it's clearly not balanced. Do you guys agree? Yes. So how do we balance this equation, right? So the rule is whatever is balanced, you leave it. Because it's balanced, you don't have to worry about it at least right now. Whatever is not balanced, you start that, right? And the, there's only one and it's easy, right? So oxygen we go for two on the left, one on the right. So which side I have to increase it? On the left hand side or on the right hand side to make it balanced? Right hand side, very good. Just You have to act like the fruit seller, right? He puts more weight on that side, right? So you have to increase it here. So how will you increase it? What you can do, you know, sometimes students do this. Can I do this? H2O2 and it is balanced. So I will just cut this and write 2 and am I done? No. What is the problem here? What is my mistake? It looks like I have finished it, right? But very important thing, you cannot change the formula. If it is water is H2O, you cannot say H2O2, right? So you are not allowed to change the chemical formulas because then you are changing the valency or, uh, you know, the compound formula. So no changing compound formulas, right? So I'm going to erase that. That is definitely wrong, right? So what we can do and let's put one here again. The only thing you can do is multiply. It's like maths, right? So you can multiply uh, the each of the elements with numbers, right? So here definitely left side is more. So on the right hand side, I'm going to multiply it with, right? Some number. Now the number that you multiply, don't be too generous. Try to multiply with the smallest number that you need. Don't multiply by 100 or something, right? It's 2 here, 1 here. So how much should I multiply by? Obviously, to match oxygen, I have to multiply by 2. If I do that, it will match. Very good. And please write once in the chat, right? So if you multiply by 2, oxygen will become 2. But since you have 2 H2O, right? So the whole hydrogen will also change, right? So what will be the new number for hydrogen? What will be the new number for hydrogen, guys? 4. Very good. 2 times 2, 2 multiplied by 2. So excellent guys, because this whole column gets multiplied, right? Since this element is, on, uh, this compound is only there. So see, oxygen is done, but hydrogen is disbalanced. It's 4 here, 2 here. Again, think like the fruit seller. Right side more, left side I have to increase. I can increase by multiplying, okay? So what should I multiply to match hydrogen? 4 here, 2 here. Again, don't be too generous. The smallest possible number that will work for you. 2 here. So you can see this will be 2 multiplied by 2. 4 hydrogen on the left side. Now is my equation balanced? You can easily check from the table. If you look at each row, hydrogen row balanced. 4 on the left, 4 on the right. Oxygen number of atoms, 2 on the left, 2 on the right. 
So both the elements are balanced. Each and every row must be balanced. You cannot half balance the equation. All of you crystal clear? Such a simple systematic method. This is a very important slide. Please take a look. Did all of you follow this? If you have doubt, please ask me now. And then I, otherwise I'll go to the next example. So now it's become a balanced equation. Our equation is now balanced. Yes, happy guys. Do you guys agree? Okay. So always and what are you balancing? Number of atoms of each element on the left and right. Okay. So we'll practice some more here. Let's look at another one. Why don't you guys quickly make this table? We have nitrogen plus hydrogen gives NH3 which is called ammonia. This compound is called ammonia. Okay. So what are the elements in my table guys? How many elements do I have here in this equation? Right. So very good. We have nitrogen and we have hydrogen. Again, just write the symbols. Don't waste time writing the full name. Okay. N and H. Right. Again, we have to count the number of atoms on left and number of atoms on right. So how many nitrogen atoms on the left side? Clearly, you can see it's two. All of you agree with me? Two. How many atoms on the uh, of hydrogen on the left side? Two. So we have filled up the left hand side table. Now let's look at right hand side. How many nitrogen atoms? One. Because there is no number means it is one. Hydrogen atoms H3. It's clearly three here. So now you check is your equation already balanced? Sometimes it might be. Then you don't have to do anything. You are lucky. But here you can see two and one not balanced. Two and three. So we are out of luck. It's not balanced. Right? So again, as we said, right, go for the easiest element and then keep balancing it. So which element do you want to do? Do you want to do nitrogen first or hydrogen first? What do you want to do? You guys tell me which one is easier to balance nitrogen or hydrogen? Amon is saying nitrogen. Ishan is saying nitrogen. Okay, very good. Some of you are already giving the answer. Tejesh wants to do hydrogen. I think nitrogen is easier, right? Because it's two here. We just multiply on the right hand side. So let's do that guys. I agree with you guys. Most of you said nitrogen. So if we multiply by two on the right side, we are done. Nitrogen becomes two, but don't forget to change hydrogen. Okay. Don't say I'm done, right? You have to change hydrogen two times three. The new value of hydrogen will be six. So see our nitrogen row is balanced. Hydrogen row is not balanced. So what should I do to balance hydrogen? Right. So can you guys see the method? So hydrogen uh, is more on the right, less on the left. So clearly I have to multiply. So should I multiply by two, but that will only make it four. I need six. So what is the appropriate number? So yeah, don't think of big numbers, but what is appropriate? So you want six. Obviously you should multiply by three here. Now please check is our equation done. So N2 plus 3H2, 2NH3. Have we balanced our equation? Balanced, yes. So, so simple and so systematic. If you follow the table method, you can't go wrong. Only it takes little time to make the table. And many times if they say balancing like one mark or two mark, the teachers expect you to show the table, especially in, you know, class seven, class eight, they're expecting you to show the table. All right. So that depends on your teacher. If they, if they are fine with the hit and trial, which we look, or if they want you to show the table, please write the table in a systematic way and balance it each and, and best ways you should check the answer is each and every row balanced yes it is okay yes we'll come to hit and trial also why don't you guys try this equation with the table method so how many elements do we have here so we have iron plus water giving fe3o4 this is like triferric tetroxide or ferrosophoric oxide and hydrogen so how many elements do we guys have here Clearly, you can see there is iron. So start from the left. First element is iron. Then we have hydrogen. And then we have oxygen. So there are three elements, right? Very good. Write down their symbols. How many uh, iron atoms on the left side? Clearly, there's one. How many hydrogen atoms? H2, so two. Oxygen is only going to be one, right? Very good. Fill up on the right hand side now. All of you do it right now. Don't wait for me. Do it on pen and paper. Practice it. So iron is going to be three here. Hydrogen is going to be two. 
oxygen is going to be check all oxygen right so it's four here so now you can see uh, only hydrogen row is balanced so hydrogen row is matching these guys are not matching so which one should we go for first which one do you think is easy very good madhavan is already giving some answer so we'll check right so which one is easy uh, i think iron looks easy to balance right so we can easily balance iron first if you want right so iron is right hand side three only one on the left so we're going to make it three here so iron is done hydrogen already balanced we only have to look at oxygen so oxygen is how much it's four here it's only one there right so what do i need to multiply here to balance it four here and only one there so let's multiply by four so that it becomes four so now can i say i'm done is it all done yes or no what do you guys think have i balanced the equation iman is saying no madhavan is saying no tejas is saying no very good i want all of you to please practice with me right because be careful when you are making some change here check you have correctly changed oxygen to 4 but you have also affected hydrogen right 4 h2 so this guy needs to be 4 times 2 8 don't forget it right so now you can see hydrogen is disbalanced but don't get worried it's okay you adjust it again at least the others have got balanced so hydrogen how do we adjust 8 on the left only 2 on the right so obviously you have to multiply on the guy which is less right so what do we multiply by 4 times here this will become 4 2s are 8 see now can you guys help me and check is the equation balanced yes or no you guys check and tell me maybe i made some mistake you can easily confirm also see 3 iron 3 iron 4 times 2 8 4 times 2 8 okay let me write this 4 clearly and 4 times 1 oxygen 4 oxygen here done fantastic so that's the table method so systematic so easy and you can clearly check each row nicely and always you know cancel it or you can use an eraser and keep updating the table right see how i'm updating it according to the numbers all right next let's look at the hidden trial method all right do you guys know the hidden trial method yes okay so let's see so in hidden trial again you start by balancing the easiest element go for the easiest element right because many times the hard ones automatically get balanced right and keep doing it till the equation gets balanced so you have to keep on trying the hit and trial and you can try fractions also sometimes you know so but uh, in this class maybe i'll just show you once uh, for class 8 i would recommend you not to use fractions okay but uh, I'll just give you a flavor if you want to see that or do you guys want me to show you fractions or leave it for this class? Do you guys want to see fractions also? Right? But yeah, try to avoid it. You know, sometimes you can make some mistakes. I'll just show you if, uh, if you guys are interested. All right. So how do we balance this equation? So what is good about the hidden trial method is you don't have to make a big table, right? You can just go fast and try to balance it. So how do you look at it you see sodium is one here you quickly check sodium how many here one sodium is balanced i won't bother about it okay chlorine two on the left side how many on the right one okay so two more here less there so quickly multiply by two here so you have to do it all mentally without a table right so chlorine two and chlorine two here balanced right two here two there so it's balanced chlorine is balanced now sodium how many sodium on the right side how many sodium do you have on the right two right don't say i have finished right so two sodium but only one here so clearly it's less here so we have to make it more and we'll do that by multiplying by two so see have we balanced our equation without making a table please check so two sodium two sodium two chlorine two chlorine done fantastic so see in hit and trial sometimes hit and trial is allowed you don't have to show the whole table in school you can quickly solve it or sometimes you know you can cheat you can do the hit and trial in rough and then make the table okay happy good next one can you guys try this one for me why don't you try it so this is potassium chlorate please learn all these names and symbols gives potassium chloride on heating it gives potassium chloride plus oxygen so please copy down the equation and everybody try right now 
and let's try with hit and trial method. If it doesn't balance, you can always make the table. You know, sometimes uh, with hit and trial, it gets a little confusing. You can go for the table then. Very happy. Great. I'm also feeling very happy. So can you guys balance this quickly for me? So you can see that potassium chlorate, right, gives potassium chloride plus oxygen. So potassium already balanced, K balanced, Cl balanced. Oxygen is 3, but oxygen is 2 here, okay. So it is less, it's more here, 3 here and 2 here, right. So I need to increase this. So let's say I multiply by 2 here, right? I have to increase on the right side. Is it balanced now, guys? Very good. I can see some answers. Good. It's not balanced, right? It's not balanced because this is 3, this is 4. Clearly, you can see. So what will be the problem? If I increase it further, 3, again, nothing will happen. You know, again, this one is falling. This, this guy is less. So this is not helping, you know. So let's say I, I bring it back to 2 here. So problem is if you keep it at 2, this is 4 oxygen, this is 3 oxygen, right? So which side is less? This side is less. Yes? And I've used the smallest possible number, 2. I've not been generous. Don't be over generous. 4, 5, some people put 100, you know? Put a small number. Don't be super generous, okay? Right? Be generous to your friends, not to the equations. Okay? So 2 is okay, right? So it is less on this side. Oxygen is less. Look here, guys. This side is 3 oxygen and this side is 4 oxygen. This side is less. So which side is less? I will increase that. Again, I won't be over generous. I'll just, let's say, multiply by 2 here. And some of you also realize that, that oxygen is 3 here, this is 2 here. You have odd even problem, right? So you have to make this side an even number. Otherwise, how will you match it up? So there is another way to think that I have to multiply by 2. Yes or no? Do you guys agree? Because can you see that odd even problem? This is O3, this is O2. It will never match up. One is odd number, one is an even number, right? So we are making this even here. And why did I do 2 here? Because it was 4 this side, it was less there. So now it is 2 KCl and 2 O2. So if I want to balance oxygen, it is 6 over there, right? So I have to make it 3 here. Is it balanced now? Please check. So you can see on the left side, 2 times 3 is 6 oxygen. And right side, 3 times 2, 6 oxygen. Not 60. This is 6 oxygen. Yes. Is it balanced? No. Oxygen is balanced, right? Very good. Now we will go for potassium. Potassium is not balanced because potassium is, oops, this was 3, right? So potassium is 2 here, only 1 here. So I have to multiply by 2. So now potassium is also balanced. Chlorine is it balanced? 2 chlorine, 2 chlorine. Done. Happy guys? Right? Is it working? Yes, yes. So see, this is the technique. Don't be very generous. Be generous to your friends. Be generous to your parents. Be generous to everybody. Don't be over generous in balancing equations because if you end up with bigger numbers, that's not good, right? So we tried with the smallest possible number and it's worked. No Sivan, I think 666 six, six, you have put in all the three ones, it will cancel, right? We'll talk about that. You have overbalanced it. So this is the final answer and you guys check. 2 potassium, 2 potassium, 2 chlorine, 2 chlorine. 2 times 3, 6 oxygen, 3 times 2, 6 oxygen. Done. Why don't you try this guy with hit and trial? Come on. Can you guys try this for me? So this is pot potassium, uh, sorry, phosphorus plus oxygen gives phosphorus pentoxide. I am very generous. I am also not generous with the equations, right? Not to the equations. So how do you do this? Again, phosphorus, oxygen. Which one looks easy to balance? You can see it's P2 here. So let's quickly balance our phosphorus guy. It's less on the left side. We'll multiply by 2. Done? Okay. Oxygen is 5 here. It is 2 here. What do we do to oxygen now? Come on, all of you try. Everybody pick up your pen and paper. Don't be lazy. Don't wait for the answers. Please try. No, some of you are changing the symbol. You are changing this to O. It's O2. Atomicity is 2. You cannot change this. Don't change any formulas, right? Some of you are changing this to O. It's O2. So here you can see we have P2O5, right? 
So 5 here, 2 here. So I have to increase it on this side, right? So if I have to increase it, I can put, you know, if I put 2, it will be 4. So if I put 3, it will be 6. So again, you can see that odd even problem is happening because any number you multiply by 2, you are going to get an even number here. But this is an odd number. Can you see the problem, guys, again? All of you are seeing this? This is 6 oxygen, even number. This is 5 oxygen, odd number. Are you guys able to see this issue? Right? So, how do we fix it? Usually, you multiply the odd number by 2 so that it becomes even. Right? So, we can easily change the odd to even. So, we have to multiply the whole thing by 2. Right? So, let us multiply this whole thing by 2. So, now how much oxygen do we get here? So, what are we getting here? Now, we get 10 oxygen. Right? So, let us balance off the oxygen which was concerning us. Right? So, we have 10 oxygen. How much should I put on the left by hit and trial? We want 10. So, we will go for 5. Is it done? Is this the correct answer? Right? See, now we have made it even. This has become even. Ten oxygen and ten oxygen. But how much phosphorus do you see on the left? Left is two, right side is two multiplied by two. Don't forget it. Don't count it as P2 because the whole thing is two times, right? Two P2O5. So two multiplied by two, you can clearly see there is four phosphorus here. So I need four phosphorus. So definitely we have to change this to four. Now it's working. Everybody got this? Is it correct? You want to see fractions? Okay. I will just show you once, but first get into this practice because fractions are little dangerous. I should not really show you. Do you guys want me to show you dangerous stuff? You like dangerous stuff? No? Yes? Okay. I will just show you, but I advise do not use it. Okay. First, you master equations. Right? So, is this correct? Let me show you the fractions if you want for a simple example. So, this one you can solve very fast with fractions, right? So, let us say even without fractions, it is very easy, right? As we saw, but let us say you want to solve it with fractions. Sodium is balanced. Chlorine is 1 on the right, 2 on the left, right? All of you agree? This is 1 chlorine and this is 2 chlorine. So, if I want to you know, if I want to reduce this on the left, I can do fractions means rather than multiplying, you are reducing. Can I do half chlorine? Please see, right? So, if I do half chlorine, how much chlorine I have on the left now? Half multiplied by 2. How much is that? How much is half multiplied by 2? Very good. We have 1 chlorine here. And this side also, you guys can see, you have only 1 chlorine. Is the equation balanced? It is balanced. 1 sodium, 1 sodium, half times 2, 1 chlorine, 1 chlorine. But you can't leave fractions. Leaving fractions is not good, right? So, how do you fix it? You multiply the whole equation times 2. You multiply it by 2 because you cannot leave fractions. So, let us start multiplying 2 times sodium, 2, 2 times half, how much is that? 2 times half is 1. So, it becomes this. And 2 times sodium chloride is this. There is your trick. Okay? So, see, we still got the same answer. right? We got the same answer as before except we use fractions. But guys, I should not have shown you all this dangerous stuff. But you guys asked for it. But please avoid this. Okay? Avoid fractions. For now. Once you guys become expert, we can do that. Because it's the course has just started. You guys are just learning. I would suggest please avoid the fractions, right? So, I would cancel this for now, right? I do not know if it is showing clearly on the screen, okay? Yeah, that is, it is danger zone, avoid it, okay? So, what is the important thing? When you are balancing, please, after you are balanced, you can easily check your answer. You can be the teacher. Please check if number of atoms of all the elements all, not one or two, 
all elements are balanced. And second point, to discuss the second point, can you guys tell me is this final equation balanced or not? Is it balanced? Yes or no? Please look at the last equation. Is it balanced? Yes or no? If you look at it, 4 times hydrogen, this is 8 hydrogen and 2 times 2 is 4 oxygen. And if you see the right side, 4 times 2 is 8 hydrogen and 4 times 1 is 4 oxygen. So does it look balanced? Yes or no? It looks balanced, but it is overbalanced. Very good. As some of you are saying, we can cancel it. So if you write something like this, your teacher will mark it wrong because it is overbalanced. You have over multiplied. Right? So even though it's balanced, but you can't argue with your teacher because you have been too generous. You have put big numbers. Okay? So what is the correct way? How do you fix this? If there is any common factor, so always, you know, I always do this. Check all the numbers, right? So check all these balancing numbers. And if there is any common factor, you quickly divide. Even though you found it's balanced, but you divide and then check if the answer is balanced or not. So what will you do here? What is the common factor? Clearly 2. So 4 by 2, 2 by 2 and 4 by 2. So what answer we are getting now? So this answer will become 4 by 2 is 2H2 plus 2 by 2 is O2 and that's going to give me 4 by 2 is 2H2. So this is the correct answer. Yes. So will you guys remember? Yes, we are multiplying by the common factor, the HCF, right? The common factor here, 4, 2 or 4, the common factor is 2. So is this clear? Lowest common factor or highest common factor, right? If you find, can find a not lowest, highest common factor, we divide it off. So this is the correct answer. So please check, you should not have any common multipliers. This should not be there. Okay. So which method should we use? Which methods will you use guys? Will you guys go for hit and trial or table method? What one will you use? So my recommendation is again, it can be different in your school. You please follow what is given in your school as well. Uh, my recommendation is always try hit and trial first, right? So first try this because it is very fast. You don't have to make a table. You can quickly balance it. But some equations are difficult. If they are not easy to balance, then you try this as the second option, right? And definitely patience and practice. Don't, you know, feel that you're not able to do it. Just keep practicing and you'll be able to easily balance chemical equations. Is that clear? So do you guys want to try this one? Please give this a try. ZNS plus O2 gives zinc oxide plus SO2. So you guys again try this one. Try hit and trial first. If it doesn't work for you, if you're getting confused, then go for the systematic table. So I want everybody to try this. So hit and trial, you can see zinc is balanced. Sulfur is balanced. One sulfur, one sulfur. Oxygen is two on the left. And how many on the right? How many oxygen do you see on the right? Very good. Three, because don't forget to count this, right? It is one oxygen plus two oxygen. And how much will that be? Three oxygen. Absolutely right. One oxygen plus two oxygen will give you three oxygen, right? Very good. So clearly it is not balanced, right? So oxygen is less on the left. It is more on the right. Yes, it's more on the right. So I'll quickly multiply again by the smallest number here. Don't be too generous. So two and one, three. So let's multiply it by two here, right? I'm just increasing it. So it's become four here and it's become only it's three here. So clearly we have to fix it. So if you want to increase oxygen, we can multiply this by two. Now do we have four on the left hand side? Please check. Do we have four on the left hand on the right uh, on the left? We have four on the right. Do we have four now? Yes, because two times one plus two four oxygen done. Right. And then zinc is two times. We have to put it two here. So two zinc, two sulfur. So I have to put a two sulfur here. Right. Is it balanced now? But it looks like I have twos all over the place. Is it balanced? No, because two zinc, two zinc. 2 sulfur, 2 sulfur. But how many oxygen on the right side right now? How many oxygen? Can you count and tell me guys? On the right side, how many oxygen are there? Very good. 2 plus 4. 
6 oxygen. How many on the left? Only 4. So, I have to make it to make it 6, we need to multiply by 3 here. And now you will see that there are 6 oxygen. And this side also 6 oxygen. Is it balanced now? Check. It's balanced. So, see the hidden trial was very fast. We didn't go for any fancy table. We just quickly did it step by step, always increasing the number on the side, it is less. That is the trick of hidden trial or any balancing trick. You just slowly increase the number on the side, it is less. Clear? Is this crystal clear? And last question for today, do you guys want to try this one? Lead nitrate gives lead oxide plus NO2 plus O2. Please try this question. Come on, last question for today and then we are done. So, you guys can try hidden trial first. Okay. But hidden trial may get a little confusing. So, some of you can try, maybe some of you will balance it uh, with the hidden trial. So, definitely with practice, you know, you guys will be able to balance. But since hidden trial is little difficult, we can go for table method, right? So, let us make the table. So, what are the elements involved here? Pb is lead. What are the element? Nitrate, please do not take it as one, it is an ion. So, we have to break it down into nitrogen here and oxygen. All right, right, nitrogen and oxygen. So, how many uh, nitrogen on the, uh, how many lead on the left hand side? One, right. How many nitrogen on the left hand side? Please tell me how many nitrogen? One multiplied by two. Is that clear? Yeah, one multiplied by two. So, two. How many oxygen on the left side? 3 multiplied by 2, 6. Be careful in the counting. Counting is very important. If counting is wrong, everything will go wrong. Right? Right hand side, how many lead? 1. How many nitrogen? 1. How many oxygen? 1 plus 2 plus 2, 5. Very good. Yes. Fill up your table correctly. That is very important. If your table numbers are wrong, you will not be able to balance it or if your formulas are wrong. Okay? So, formulas must be correct and these numbers should be correct. Now, go in a systematic way. Lead is already balanced. We will not worry about it. Nitrogen, oxygen. Clearly, nitrogen is easier to balance. right? We just have to multiply by 2 on this side. right? So, if we multiply by 2 here, this becomes 2 nitrogen and this will become 2 times 2 is 4 oxygen, 5, 6, 7. Oh, so we almost balance it, but oops, oxygen is 6 here, oxygen is 7 on the right. So, what do I need to do? V rest is all balanced, lead and nitrogen balanced, right? Oxygen less on the left, more on the right, no problem. We will increase the number on the left by multiplying by 2. Do you guys agree with my step here? Please multiply by 2. So, once you multiply by 2, the whole table changes, right? Lead becomes 2. Nitrogen becomes 2 times 2, 4 and oxygen will become 6 times 2, 12, right? The whole table changes. No problem. Again, now we will go for the easy ones. Do not go for oxygen. Lead is 2 here. I will make it 2 times here balanced. Nitrogen is 4 on the left. It is only 2 here. We will change the number to 4. Balanced. And please check how much oxygen on the right now. Please check. So, see we have balanced the easy elements, always easy elements first. Lead is balanced, nitrogen is balanced. How many oxygen on the right side? Can you guys check? 2 plus 4 times 2 which is 8. So, 2 plus 8, 10 plus 2, 12. So, how many do we have? 12. And yes, we are done. 12 and 12. Hooray! So, it is working. Can you see? So, basically if you balance the easy one, sometimes the difficult one automatically gets balanced. Can you see that? ABCD method is advanced method later. That is usually for class 9 and 10, right? So, we will do that later. If you guys are interested in that, you can search the video. I think balancing chemical equations, it is on YouTube. You can check the ABCD method there if you guys are interested. Okay? Clear? So, this is how you balance. I recommend you not to use ABCD right now. Do not go for fractions now go for table and hit and trial, get master this, then go to the next step. Okay. All right, guys, with that, we are done. Hope you enjoyed this balancing class and do check out our other courses on our website. We have 
uh, physics, chemistry, maths for CBSE, we have them for ICSE as well and we have them, uh, we have coding courses and this uh, IGCSE Cambridge course. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Please practice balancing. We'll be giving you more quizzes and questions on that. And uh, so practice it from your book as well. So hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next class. Bye-bye. Take care.